Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to build video number four in the Hispano Aviation Ultimatum build series. This is the second part of the wing episode. So my goal for this episode is to wrap up the wings. That means we're gonna get a lot accomplished, I hope. Uh, we'll see what happens. The primary focus on this episode is gonna be obviously finishing up the wings, but gear doors is a, is a big one. So stay tuned guys, and we'll get into some fun stuff with this amazing aircraft. All right, so last video we focused on the lighting setup. So this was, uh, we, that video was recorded yesterday, so we still haven't pulled the tape off, but uh, that's gonna be the next step here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the tape off, we're gonna get uh, the lighting system finished first, and then we'll start moving into the other parts of this video. So we also wanna focus on getting our surfaces done, so our aileron, our flap, uh, we have to get our gear installed to figure out our gear doors, and then we have to work on the gear doors, which is gonna be tricky. So anyways, uh, let's pull these, uh, the tape off and see what she looks like. Okay, so uh, the lenses are probably gonna be rough when we take these, this tape off, and that's to be expected because we are going to have a bunch of uh, the E6000 that we use to glue the lenses on coming out from around the lenses. Now, this is not a big deal because as you can see here, it rubs off. So I'm gonna continue pulling the tape off of both wings and then we'll talk about what our next step with the lenses is. Okay, so we've pulled off all the glue. Now we could leave the lenses like this, but it's not a 100% finished look because you can see the edges and stuff like that. Hi, Nez. You're kind of in the way, bud. So you can see the edges and stuff like that, and that's why we want to paint this. Now, we could paint this uh, black. We could paint it orange. There's lots of different options here, but uh, the goal was to get as close of a color match as possible to the original color. So I, I did go to the uh, paint shop the other day and got a color match, so hopefully it's close, but... Uh, It'll be a nice finished look anyways, uh, compared to what's there. So what we need to do now is we need to tape off the perimeter of the lens. So we basically go around the outside nicely, and then we wanna tape off the inside, and uh, then we have to mask the entire wing. So we're gonna do that on both wings. So I'm just gonna do all the masking and I'll show you guys the final result. Fairly straightforward, obviously you're just leaving the uh, area you wanna paint exposed. <laughs> All right, so that is what our wing prep looks like for the lenses. So it turned out perfect. Uh, so the, obviously the exposed area is going to be the area that gets painted. So what we need to, need to do now is we need to prep off the rest of the wing. When you're painting stuff like this, it's, uh, trust me, the overspray goes everywhere. So prep everything off. We'll prep everything off on this wing before we spray that area. All right, so we have uh, the wings all prepped off. I did the first coat on here. Now when you're doing this, super thin coats, right? Like just, a, you can see here, just a light mist. It's all you need uh, because most of the wing color, if you're using a matching wing color, because the wing color is gonna come through, it's just taking any other imperfections out. So we'll do another coat on uh, these wings, on both of them, and then we will put a clear coat over top. All right, and that's what she looks like with two layers of paint and two layers of clear coat. So that is uh, ready to pull the prep off. And the other wing, we pulled the prep off and there she is, turned out beautiful. So that is definitely a way better way to finish them off. Looks really nice, you can control the lines and all you see now is those beautiful lights inside the wings. 
Okay, so our lenses that we painted are now dry to the touch so we can handle the wings safely and we're all good. Uh, we'll just be uh, cautious of those. Now I'm gonna to start to work on the surfaces and landing gear, then moving into gear doors. So first thing I need to do to wrap my head around gear doors and how everything's gonna fit and if we can make it fit is get the gear installed or at least positioned in the wing. Now the gear's not sitting flush all the way down on the, the mounts there because our plug-in for the electrical connection is hitting this, uh, this rib in the wing. So we need to take our, our Dremel and just put a little notch in that, uh, that rib. So we'll do that on both wings. I've marked out here on the sides with a little bit of Sharpie so I know exactly where to, uh, to make that happen. All right guys, so we've got the gear installed. We've got all of our cutouts and stuff done. We also had to open up the, uh, the area for the leg just a little bit, a couple millimeters here and there, but it's, uh, it's ready to kind of get fit. So what we need to do now is we need to be able to extend and retract that gear so we can get everything lined up properly. So next step in the process is getting our GS200 controller set up. Now, there's a couple different ways to set these controllers up. Number one, you can have a gear line coming in, a brake line coming in, a steering line coming in. I don't like that. I like to keep things nice and simple. So what we do is we just have a single line coming in the gear channel and that's a bus system. So then that sends the signal for the brakes and the steering. So it keeps it super simple and uh, it's just a, a nice, clean, easy setup. So in order, order to do that, we need to change one of these outputs to a bus output. So our radio's on. We're gonna plug our Rex 12 in. Our system's gonna power up. And there we go, we're all powered up and ready to go. So what we need to do first is we need to change uh, E2 to be a uh, signal output to go to the electron unit. Okay, so we may have to play with the setup a little bit, but we're also gonna have another Rex put into the system. So that receiver is also gonna have a couple uh, uh, programmable uh, input slash outputs. So what we'll do here is we'll change E2 on our radio, which is currently looking at the Rex 12. So we've gone to E2 and we're gonna change that to EX bus. So now E2 is also outputting a bus signal. So what we can do is we can now plug in from E2, confirming our polarity, and that's gonna to go to our gear in channel. So, there we go, we've got that set up. And now currently the electron is getting power to run, to turn on basically through the REC system. So in order to actually operate the gear, you need to plug in a battery, uh, which we've got here to the battery input. So what we wanna do is we wanna switch this or change this to number one, recognize our radio and number two, uh, change the inputs. We will go into the setup screen. First thing we'll do is radio. So we've got our bus system here. When you hit change, that pulls it up. So we've got JRX bus, Jetty, EX bus. So this is what we're using. And now we need to actually change our channels here. So what we'll do is we'll reference this on the radio and we'll put our gear channel, brake channel, steering channel in these numbers. Okay, so our gear channel, even though it is currently set to output number three on the Rex receiver, in the radio it is channel 10. Nose wheel is channel 11. And our brake channel is channel 12. There we go. So now that is programmed into the electron unit. And now when we operate the gear switch, we can see that it changes. So we wanna learn this stuff. So we'll go RC set. So set transmitter in the gear up position. We've done that. Next, set transmitter in the gear down position. Next, set brake channel to minimum. Next, brake channel to maximum. Next, there we go. So now our controller, if I operate the brake channel, you can see it moving there. And if I operate the gear, you can see it moving. So now our 
Electron GS200 is programmed. So one of the key things when you're using the bus system with the, e, uh, the ER200 is there's no power to the steering system here uh, currently. So what you need to do is you put a jumper wire from the brake over to steering input. Now the signal's coming out, but the way, the way that the steering channel gets power is through this jumper. Okay, so you gotta put a jumper here to go into the steering in, and then that powers the steering out channel. So now what we're able to do is we can take our line here from our electron retracts, we can plug that into the gear, and we can plug this as long, along with a battery into the controller, and we can operate this gear and get it positioned perfectly in this uh, opening right here. Now, of course, we're gonna be taking this all back apart again because we're doing gear doors, but we need to get our retract unit perfectly installed, perfectly centered. Uh, that's the next step. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. What I did here was basically cycle the gear in and out like this, getting the retract unit itself lined up. Uh, once it was lined up, drilled two of the holes, and in this case, we're using number four by five eighths wood screws. Now, there's lots of different theories on this. Uh, I, blind nuts are fine. I don't really generally like to use blind nuts. On the bigger aircraft, I get it, but on something like this, uh, I'd rather have something either threading this in a three millimeter Allen key bolt, or in this case, using wood screws. Uh, both are great options. We've got really high quality plywood here. So we've got aircraft ply laminated with carbon. I think it's either quarter inch or three eighths uh, aircraft ply and uh, we've got great structure to screw into. The benefit of using something like this or a three, three millimeter uh, um, threaded uh, bolt is that if you ever have a huge impact, hopefully these pull out before the wing gets destroyed. So what we're gonna do is we're going to finish screwing these guys off. We're gonna do the other wing and then we need to set our toe in. And the reason we need to set our toe in and finalize the position of these legs is because this surface here is where we're gonna mount our fixed gear door to and we need this to be 100% finished. Uh, otherwise that's gonna mess up our gear door angle. So gonna get this wing done, get the other wing done and then we'll, uh, we'll get our, our toe in set. Okay, so while we're here working on the gear, I took the pins out and we're gonna flat spot the pins on the gear side. And then we'll do our flat spots uh, for our final adjustment on the trunnion side, the piece that goes inside the actual moving gear. So, and the way to do the flat spots is tighten up your Allen key bolts really, really tight. And that puts a little black circle on the, uh, on the pin. And that allows you to see where they all line up. And now that we've got the flat spots there, I'll just push the pin in till we're on the flat spot and we'll use some blue Loctite and get those uh, screwed down and tightened down. Okay, so this is also the time when we will do all of our Loctiting on our gears. So that is now done. We've done all of our metal to metal contacts. So the four on the brake, one on the bottom, installed our E-clip on the back of the axle and uh, obviously the, the pin is Loctited and the angle adjustment we've done previously. So that is all finished. So what we can do now is we can get our other leg out and I'm just gonna use my angle finder and we will set the other leg to match this leg and uh, we'll do all of the same stuff on the other wing. Okay guys, so we are doing the toe in now and we've got obviously the plane inverted with the wings on. So what we've done here is we have marked out the center line of the aircraft. Now how we did that was put a straight edge across, put a little Sharpie marker on there. Uh, so if this was 14 inches, we just went to the seven inch mark and then did another one back here. Obviously we put tape down to mark both sides. So we've got the center line of the aircraft located. Then we transfer that center line of the aircraft closer to the landing gear itself. Now we've got a straight line here transferred to here. And to get that, we just measured from here to here. A little bit tricky on this plane because of all the angles and sweep back of the wings, but use a straight edge and it's gonna be really close. Um, now you can make this more complicated, but it really doesn't need to be. So you put a carbon rod on the wheel itself and right there, the edge of my carbon rod is now lined up with this tape. So now that is zero degrees of toe-in. 
And now what I want to do is I want to take that carbon rod, add a couple degrees of toe in. So what I'm looking at here is on the back line, my tape is touching the outside of my carbon rod. On the front line, it's touching the other side of the carbon rod. There's actually a little bit of a gap. So we've got a couple degrees of toe in there and that's what we're looking for. So we'll do that to both wheels and then we'll tighten down the set screws in the trunnion. And what that's gonna do is the same thing it did to the other side of the pin. It's gonna mark the pin uh, a little bit easier to deal with on the trunnion because you only have uh, inside and outside. And uh, then once we screw that down, our toe in is nice and set and everything is good with the landing gear and we can progress with the other stuff. Okay, so our flat spots are installed. It doesn't take much guys. I just take my cutoff bit and just do a little tiny uh, just a little mark there on both sides and now what we do is we put this back in the leg or on the aircraft and tighten this down and what I'll do is I will wiggle the landing gear while we're tightening it down and that gets the flat spot engaged as best as possible and then we just take our carbon rod and recheck our angle. Yeah, so right now it is like maybe one degree of toe in. So what I'll do in this case is undo my set screws on the one side, see if this other side's any better. So overall it's not bad. Uh, we've got about a degree or two of toe in. But this is the time where you would adjust that if you need to. So I'm probably gonna add just a little bit more on this. Um, so you just need to be aware of what you're actually adjusting here. So when we change these flat spots, we need to have the leading edge turning more towards the inside. So we just need to adjust our flat spots on these outside ones towards the back of the leg. So just pay attention to that. So I'll just take my grinder and add a bit more of a flat spot in the correct direction. Okay, so our final flat spot here is perfect. So we're exactly where I want it to be. And uh, that is awesome. So now what we can do is we can tighten down the legs and the legs will be installed in the gear for basically the last time. So they're, they're essentially at this point fixed. And then now when we, when we retract our gear and we're working on the gear doors and everything, we know exactly how everything's gonna work. So we we'll use Loctite on those and uh, double check, and then we'll do exactly the same thing we just did to this wing on the other side. All right, so we've been doing a bit of brainstorming here on how to make everything work. So one of the keys to working on the gear doors and the lights and everything was getting the actual landing gear installed. So with the landing gear installed, now what we get to do is we get to see our geometry and how things work out. So if you've watched my previous videos, uh, what we're gonna probably do here for the gear doors is we're gonna do this like the L39. So we're gonna have one piece that's back here. This line right there is the trunnion open line. So when this is open, uh, that's, as, that's where the trunnion's sitting. So it, there's gonna be just a little bit of a cutout there for the actual trunnion itself. Uh, this is gonna be covered. We're gonna have another door that's glued to the leg and that's gonna to come to about this point right here on the round portion. So this is gonna be a nice shape. And then our actual gear door itself is gonna be half round and then it's gonna be squared off. So it's gonna open like that. So I think that's gonna be the best alternative. Now I was kind of thinking about where to mount the light. Now traditionally we put the light the landing light right here. Problem is we've got a main piece of structure here, got another main piece of structure here, and these ultimatum legs are really short, so there's not lots of room on them. So for now, we're ditching the light on the leg idea. I'm not gonna do it, and uh, what we're probably gonna do is mount it to the door. So when this door opens, then we will have the light sitting in this corner right here. That's gonna make the most amount of sense. And then we've got lots of room at the aft part of the wing for the servo to operate the door. So that is the plan as of right now. And I think that is gonna work out perfect. So now that we've got this stuff figured out, 
What I'm gonna do on each leg is mark it all out like this. We're gonna pull the, the legs out and we're gonna work on the surfaces just so we can get that stuff done and get our wires pulled and everything. And then everything from this point out will be finished on the wing. So that's the next step. Pull the landing gear out, get the aileron, get the flap set up. And uh, once that's done, then we'll come back to focusing on the door setup. All right, guys, so we've got the uh, the aileron all set up here, and uh, I really like, I, I can't say it enough, the uh, the linkage system on these are beautiful. Now, we haven't uh, finalized the position of the arm here yet because we have to be able to plug in the, the servo. I also found some Align pan head screws, and these worked out awesome for, uh, for fastening those L brackets. So nice big heads on these guys. So anyways, that's how we, uh, we did the, the aileron surface. Now I'm very impressed with the geometry of the flap system. So we ended up using, as I think we talked about originally, the 10 millimeter, car or well, the carbon horn from MKS, but the closest in hole is 10 millimeters. And that is perfect for these flaps. The geometry works out awesome. You can see there that the arm is facing the flap and uh, that gives us exactly 60 millimeters of travel with the linkage. Now the linkage isn't adjusted yet, but it's pretty much uh, threaded in on both ends is perfect. So this is like, it, it's basically designed for this aircraft. It's awesome. And this brings up another episode of Tip Time. And this Tip Time has been brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. Now, some of you guys have reached out to me and said, how can we support the channel? We've talked about this previously about a year ago when we were actually moving into the new shop here and getting things ready. Um, I've had a Patreon account for a while since I started the channel, I think, and um, haven't done anything with it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put my links down below to my Patreon account. I've had a few people reach out and say, hey, where's your Patreon account? And I'm like, well, I've, I've got one, but it it just never gets used. So anyways, that's what we're gonna do from now on. Patreon account, links down below. Um, if you wanna support the channel, uh, feel free to, to do it on there. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the donations. It's, uh, it's super cool. This tip time, I've shown you guys this before, but maybe we haven't exactly uh, explored it in a while. So the, the travel for this aircraft, uh, what you're supposed to get is 30 mils on the trailing edge here, 30 millimeters for takeoff flaps, 60 millimeters for landing flaps. Well, that's really difficult to set up when you have the distance and not the angle. So what I do is I get the wing kind of positioned, solidified in, in place, and I will measure out 60 millimeters of flap travel on the flap itself. And then I take my angle finder and put it in a repeatable spot. So in this case, we're going to the base of the, uh, where the, I guess the leg kind of meets the, uh, the strut. That's kind of my location point. And I, at 60 millimeters of travel, I get my angle finder set up. So now we've got a repeatable measurement that we can use. So when we're setting up this linkage, all I need to do is get my angle finder set up and that's what we're adjusting it to. So super simple way to do this. This is a handy tool. I think I got this at Princess Auto here. Uh, I think in the US you can get it at McMaster Car. It's a couple dollars and it's just a nice uh, nice unit to, uh, to find different angles. Like this is the exact tool I used to match one trailing strut to the other trailing strut. It just works out perfect. So anyways, guys, this makes it repeatable, easy to set up. Now what I can do is with that arm straight like that on the flap servo, we can adjust that linkage to get our, our setup exactly where it needs to be. And then we can use our, uh, at takeoff flaps, we can use that position of the servo arm and flaps off to adjust the flap system. Okay, so you can see here what I'm talking about. So what I've done is left this side of the uh, surface open on the flap side. We've now got the clevis installed on the servo arm, the servo arm installed with uh, Loctite. So what we're doing is adjusting that linkage. So a turn at a time, I've already got this all set up, but now I can take my angle finder, go like this um, and boom, we are perfect. So now on this side of the surface, I can get that set up. And then what happens is in our radio, 
we now adjust the other positions on the flap. So our full flaps is set. That's where it is. The only way to get more travel out of this is to adjust the either the servo arm, the linkage length, that kind of stuff. Our mid flaps is probably going to be too much flaps and flaps off is not flaps off all the way. So these adjustments we'll do later on, but those are very simple to do in the radio. But the key at full flaps, we've got nice linkage geometry here and all of the force of that flap is right into the servo arm and the servo doesn't get any, you can hear it, well you can hear nothing when I push on that surface. If we had that servo arm cranked at 90 degrees or even a couple degrees from where it is, when we pushed on this, you'd hear the servo starting to buzz. So this is a great and perfect geometry setup for flaps. All right guys, and this is Flipper. She's our bare-eyed cockatoo. We've had her for 22 years now. Hi Flip. We got her the year that we got married. And she's a sweetheart. She's a pain in the butt. Uh, she loves Katie more than anything in the world but she tolerates me, so. And sometimes she likes to just hang out in the shop. Right, Flip? All right, so we have both wings done as far as the surfaces go. Man, look at all the fingerprints on these things. They need a good polish when we're done. Um, so all of our wires are gonna come to the normal wire location on the wings. Now, I thought about doing them up front here. I know Danny at Aero Panda, he's building one right now and I think he's gonna put them up front. Uh, downside to that is, number one, for me, there's no great path over top or, or underneath the wing tube. And there's another uh, rib or former uh, in this location right there. So uh, I'm gonna avoid that. But what, what we're gonna end up doing, because we're gonna have so many connections here, we're essentially gonna have I think 18 servo leads coming out of here. So if we do two nine pin connectors, I think that'll fit. So on the fuselage side here, uh, Hispano Aviation has done a matching uh, cutout. Now obviously our nine pin connector won't fit in there, but the actual woodwork comes back uh, about another five to eight millimeters. You can kind of see it in there. So this fiberglass right here is just um, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dremel this area out to make it a little bit bigger to follow the, the cutout in the former that's, or the, the structure that's glued there. And that's going to give us enough space to tuck our connectors, I think, into the fuselage in this location. So that's my plan for the connectors. So we're working on the uh, gear doors now. So I'm just trying to come up with some measurements and a plan. Now I think I've got my plan in place. Uh, and the green tape is actually a really good problem solver. So you can put green tape here. And if you take a really sharp X-Acto knife, it just follows the shape perfectly. So we have, like I've talked about, three different gear doors on this. So what we can do is we can just lay down our green tape, cut it out, and now we've got a perfect template for this location. Um, for the the uh, actual wheel opening here, what I've done is I put the carbon wing tube in, took a square and drew a straight line or perpendicular line from the wing tube. Now we know that this is the forward back travel of the, the aircraft. So this is the angle that our gear door is gonna be at. And from here we can now uh, draw our squared off pieces, which will give us our gear door opening We'll eventually cut those out here once we're happy with everything. Um, but this is kind of the, the first step is getting the geometry and shapes all done up. All right, so I think we've got our doors all figured out on both wings. Uh, we've adjusted the spacing here so it's the same. And I think this is gonna work out good. I hope it's gonna work out good. Um, what I'm gonna do for a hinge on here is we're not gonna do a uh, standard, uh, what I would call hidden hinges. Um, so like the standard jet hinges you would get as an example. I can show you an example because we're gonna use them. Well, we're gonna use those ones on the front door. So um, anyways, what we're gonna do here is we're going to use a, um, I, the first time I ever saw this was on a carf plane. Um, anyways, we're gonna use a, a piano hinge type method. So basically what you do is you've got a brass tube on the door and on the surface. 
door surface and you use a little piece of piano wire that goes in there. So what happens with that is if our hinge point is right here, as an example, when this door opens, uh, this back piece actually goes in inside the wing while the other part goes out. So as long as you've got space for it, it actually works out really well. And we do have space for it in this scenario because we're running the door a little bit past uh, the bottom of the wheel. So this, this will allow us tons of room. Now the reason we're running that door past the wheel is because I'm hoping that we will have enough space to put our uh, landing light in this kind of area. Um, I'm trying to, trying to maximize this as much as possible, but we do have structure right here, and we do obviously have structure at the root of the wing, so I can't really bring this a whole lot more um, this direction. So it's gonna be a bit of a questionable at this point if we're gonna be able to use the landing light. So we'll see, I'm not 100% sure right now, but we'll see, and um, Anyway, so that is going to be the design of the gear door. So we've marked both of them out identical. So next step is to cut this out. Now I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is use my straight edge, my X-Acto knife, and just cut this so it's nice and straight. But uh, let's do that and see what the next step is. All right, so there's a close-up shot of before gear door cutout. And there's a shot of after gear door cutout. Now these actually weren't that easy to cut out. This part was, this part was not. Uh, you gotta remember that this whole plane is, or well the whole wing is carbon. So you've got carbon everywhere. Uh, so getting through that carbon with the X-Acto knife wasn't uh, really awesome, but we made it happen. So I, when I cut this out, I just took a file and squared off the edges and smoothed them out. So now our gear door is officially set. All right, so this is our process for our gear doors. We're working on the left one here right now, and uh, we've taped over the opening. So I've put two layers of tape here, so we've got a little bit of structure going on. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sharp X-Acto knife and just cut it out. Now the goal is to make this in one piece so that we can use this as a template. And when I do this kind of stuff, I put a brand new X-Acto blade on so it's as sharp as possible. And works perfect. So now we've got a template for our left main gear door. Now it's okay if this is too big, this just gets us the right shape. Now the way I'm gonna make these is I'm gonna make them out of 1 16th ply and we're gonna laminate them on both sides with fiberglass. So what I've done here is marked out the natural curve of the plywood. So the, the curve is curved like this and I've written it down there, curve. So on the gear door, I wanna make sure that I, I install the gear door to follow the natural curve of the plywood. Now we're gonna go a little bit bigger Again, not worrying about the, uh, the overage or anything, anything like that, because we'll cut this out, shape it out, and we'll be good. So we're gonna repeat this for all the different pieces, left main, right main, um, our intermediate uh, pieces, and then our back pieces. Now, when we do our other pieces here, this, again, we can make this too big and shape it, we can make this piece too big and cut it out afterwards. Now we are gonna have a big cutout here for our trunnion like we've already marked out. But at this point, we're not worrying about that. All we're doing is we're getting a piece that's gonna fit in here nice and the correct thickness and all that stuff. And the goal is to have this stuff all sit flush. All right, so we've got all of our templates done up here and uh, now it's time to cut them out. So what we're gonna do is cut them all out and then we are going to fit them to the aircraft. All right, so this is exactly what we're looking for here. Uh, so I've cut all the, the shapes out, and this is the very first one that I've actually spent time shaping. And we are, you know, a couple millimeters all the way around the perimeter, and that is a darn near perfect fit. On that, uh, on that door, so that is awesome. Uh, now once we add our layers of fiberglass to inside and outside, that's gonna pretty much equal the thickness of that material 
that uh, that's there right now. Now this is going to vary a little bit because of the different shapes and stuff. 2.6. So we're 2.6 to 3 millimeters thick on this material here. We're 1.5. So we can basically double this material thickness without any issue at all. And uh, that's going to be fine. So when we lay our fiberglass on there, we will be good. So that is what we're after for all of the other pieces. Now the other pieces where these ones intersect and stuff, I'm not really going to worry about it. So if we've got a piece that comes in here, uh, it's not the end of the world because we can shape this afterwards. But uh, if I can get them done now, then I will. All right, so all of our pieces are successfully cut out and they're really close to fitting. Uh, the ones that are going to be the, uh, the final fitting basically are the intersection between like the gear, uh, the wheel door and the leg door, and then the intersection up here as well too. Uh, so those will all be fit final before we paint these things. But next thing we need to do is we are going to fiberglass these pieces. All right guys, and that is everything for this episode. Uh, we made some good progress on the ultimatum. Obviously our focus was primarily on the wings. Now in the next episode, we're going to do the glassing of the gear doors, and then we'll get on to moving to other sections of the plane while we wait for those gear doors to do their thing. The gear doors are going to be quite a bit of time, just uh, glassing, waiting, glassing, waiting. So we're going to be doing the rest of the plane as we progress through uh, those gear doors, the gear door installation. That's it for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching. Again, thank you. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's the Patreon links down below. Um, appreciate it, guys. I'm just throwing that out there because people have asked for it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you are a subscriber and you don't have your notifications on, just check down below for the bell. Uh, the bell is the little symbol uh, where the subscribe button would be and you can turn notifications on. That way you'll get notified when I release new videos. So we've got some really exciting things coming up on the channel. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.